Society's Say That Keep Me Company journalist and author Ella Whelan and Conservative commentator Alan, Alex Dean. Now, get your popcorn out because Starmer versus the boat crossings has already kicked off. 64 wannabe UK residents arrived today to be welcomed by the Border Force vessel Hurricane. Here is our exclusive view from Dover with the world's best home security editor, Mark White. Well, we heard an awful lot of talk in the dying days of the Conservative government, the latter stages of the general election campaign, about the number of small boat migrants on the other side of the channel just waiting, biding their time for what the Conservatives said would be a Starmer government offering them the green light to come across in their thousands. Today, of course, we saw the first of those channel migrants arrive, just a small number initially. But in truth, this is about the weather. It's always about the weather. Anytime we've got bad weather, as we have had for the last seven days, then you don't get any small boats coming across the channel. Overnight, we had an improvement in the weather conditions, which allowed this initial cohort, just a small number of migrants to begin with, to come across. Of course, Labour have scrapped the Rwanda scheme. We only gave the African nation £40 million, but fear not, New Home Secretary Yvette Cooper has it all in hand. We're setting up a major new approach to law enforcement against the criminal gangs who are undermining our border security and putting lives at risk. This will be a major new border security command that will bring together the work of the National Crime Agency, the work of the Border Force, the work that happens along the Channel, but also the way that these networks stretch right across Europe to go after the gangs that are profiting from this dangerous trade in people and undermining our borders. I wish her well, but that sounds rather like a load of different people just talking to each other. MP Nigel Farage had this to say. I don't think we'll solve any of this, and there's some evidence that the trafficking gangs have been telling people over the last month, just wait until Labour win, and then you're guaranteed that you, you know, to, to stay, you're guaranteed you won't go to Rwanda. So if we get some calm weather over the next few weeks, the numbers coming will be enormous. So, Alex, no Rwanda deterrent, no plans uh, to reduce our attractive hospitality benefits package. What more have Labour got? Well, to be fair to them, first of all, the past government didn't stop the boats either. And so, you know, we ought to show, I think, a, a bit of humility as Conservatives rather than just bouncing straight into criticising uh, the new lot. But, I mean, I must say, the, it was plain from the disarmingly honest responses of people smugglers that the Rwanda scheme was a deterrent to their customers. And their customers are, let's remind ourselves, each and every one of them, paying people smugglers and their criminal gangs significant amounts of money to cross over in, uh, many safe countries and then a remarkably busy body of water putting themselves and their families in danger. So it seems to me that it's not a very good start from Labour to effectively incentivise them by scrapping the scheme. Mm. But the bigger picture to me is this. The new government, I think, is going to learn very quickly that the left-wing activists who criticise the Rwanda scheme, when they succeeded in tearing that down, they don't just say, OK, job done, we're, we're, we're finished now, or off we go to, I don't know, academia or something. What they'll say is, what's next? What are we going to target mm. next? Whatever Labour puts up is going to be targeted. I think they, they would have been better off sticking with the Rwanda scheme. Politically, they'd, attached, they'd attacked it so much that it was likely never going to be able to, to, to do that. But just realistically, they'd have been better off trying to get that running rather than setting up their own one, which will be attacked in exactly the same way. Ella, what's the deterrent if Rwanda has gone? Well, we know... I mean, I was not a fan of the Rwanda scheme. Um, I just thought that, it, it, one, it wasn't ever going to work, and ideologically I didn't get on board with the idea of exporting our immigration problem like this. But it's... I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. It doesn't seem to me to be rocket science how to deal with um, the issue of small boats and, even more broadly, the issue of an unwieldy asylum seeker um, system, which is that all you have to do is have a proper functioning deportation system, a proper functioning set of buildings, not some kind of, I don't know, a clunky old barge or a um, place like Yarlswood that was, uh, you know, horrendous conditions, have, have a proper system with proper functioning paperwork and pro uh, humane kind of conditions, which deals either as, uh, as sort of liberally or as harshly as you want it to. I think the problem that Yvette Cooper sort of has outlined there is that I just think it's 
dishonest putting the focus on the criminal gangs element of this. Because unless you're saying, as a government, that you're going to go into other nations and get involved in law enforcement elsewhere, which they're not, they're, no one has any interest in doing, you can't do that much about the criminal gangs. If you're not willing to go into the sea and have an altercation, you can't do that much about criminal gangs. So you have to come out and say, and bite the bullet and say, this is our position. We will if deport uh, X number of people and we will do and we will do it immediately or we will do it in this uh, function, you know, stretch of time. The criminal gangs thing, w what can we do about it? People are going to risk their lives in the, on, on boats. But what we can do is say, once you get here, this is the process. And I think it's, it just comes down to as much of what government dysfunction comes down to, a kind of boring, simple issue of just the system not working mm. and governments not being willing, willing to do the hard work, but also say this is our; these are our red lines. The delay point is completely fair, right? No matter how bogus a claim might be, how long it takes to process it, that's our fault. It's not the fault of the person mm. uh, coming. So that one I concede. But on the coming here point, it seems to me we've, we've got to be able to say, if you're coming from France, you're not a legitimate asylum seeker or refugee. And people will say, well, international law says that you are, which I say the international law is being made a, a farce by this process. And by the way, when the Poles said they would not treat anyone coming over the border from Belarus, uh, from Belarus as a legitimate asylum seeker or refugee, no one said they were racist. They said they realised the situation they mm. were in. When the Finns said no one coming over the border from Russia would be treated as if they've got a claim, automatically responded. Um, um, then people didn't uh, think that that was racist. And the other 15 European countries have said they're going to offshore their processing. Well, no one says they're racist either. I don't know why we are uniquely mm. uh, racist in this circumstance by trying to say, as the Australians did, if you come here by this method, we're going to treat you in this way and send you to this place. Mm. Go on, Ella. Well, it's just that, the, I mean, ra Alex raising the international law thing is important because obviously it doesn't matter. I, from my point of view, it doesn't matter whether you're quite liberal on immigration as I am, or maybe more strict uh, as Alex's or Conservatives tend to be. I think what we have to agree is that a nation has control over its own borders, and this whole sort of being hamstrung by international law just doesn't work. If I want to argue for a more liberal immigration system, I'm only going to legitimately argue it if we are, if I bring the British people with me, and we all agree that this is a We've had the argument and we agree and it's implemented. I think, the, you know, the, the, the tragedy of the Conservatives under Rishi Sunak was that the whole... I know the sort of the um, ECHR issue can sometimes be a bit of a red herring, but the signal that sent to voters was, I'm just not going to deal with this, I'm going to leave it to be an, issue, an unresolved issue. We know that the, 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 most, the biggest block to any kind of immigration control is this sort of pantomime war between what you might term lefty activists, lawyers, and, you know, the functioning of government. And that it doesn't get resolved until someone says, we are the ones that are in control, and you would hope that's the elected government. Sure, but, but to, be, to be clear, the bigger issue in this country is lawful migration. It's not people mm. coming over on the, the boats or however else coming unlawfully. It's that what we allow in legitimately, and that's mm -hmm. far, it's far, far larger. Yeah, well, and, and that's when, if we sort of... Uh, I'm frustrated that we're hung up on the important, but in the grand scheme of the whole immigration debate, smaller issue of mm. small boats, when actually the bigger conversation is what kind of immigration system do we want to have? I think the point system at the moment has this sort of ludicrous appearance of saying we're going to get, have only people who have PhDs come over and it's going to be very elite. And in actual fact, what we need or what we get them to do mm. is work that doesn't require a PhD. So it's, it's a total sort of mis mismatch. Sure. I, I, I would also... So I agree with a good chunk of that, not least that we... That if we as a country believe that we need people to do fruit picking, then we should be able to bring people in to do fruit picking for a set period of time, in the true meaning of the word, to discriminate between individuals and say we need these people and not those people. But I, I do think, too, that... Um, uh, this is, again, very unfashionable. People who are waiting for their claims to be processed on a refugee or asylum uh, process, I'd let them work. I let them work and pay tax, and we get some of the benefit from that, rather than leaving them cooped up all together in a hotel, which is a recipe for disaster. But that is, but that is more of an incentive to come here, isn't it? I'm really conflicted on that one, Alex, because I'm like you. I'm like, well, people want to be here. Let's just put them to work. Like, just give them something yeah, to do. Yeah, but I wouldn't send them out, them any further right to stay here. 
But I, I think from a legal point of view, the, the changes that would have to be made, because once you are employed in this country, then you do automatically get more rights to remain. But I'd make it remain. completely conditional. The Germans used to have uh, a process of migrant workers. I mean, they blew through their situation because of Angela Merkel, mm. who said there's no limit to the number of people who can come. Turned out there was. It was one and a half million. But my point is, the Germans used to have a seasonal worker and, a, and an overseas mm -hmm. worker, which gave you no more rights, gave you no right to stay, but gave you the ability to come and work yeah. and have, uh, have employment and pay tax. And it seems to me that's reasonable. Would, how much of a thorn in Keir Starmer's side is Nigel Farage going to be now that he's in Parliament? Well, I just, I, I think we'd be mistaken, anyone would be mistaken to see um, a Labour Party's new government as just the soft liberal touch to immigration. Then we have to remember that, in actual, despite all their bleating about the Rwanda plan, we, one, we don't have the detail of what Labour really ideologically thinks about immigration. We, they have, they've purposely not given us that. Um, and two, it, I, they have never been particularly different to the Conservatives. There has been this move from both parties inwards to the sort of mushy centre, which is very depressing from my point of view. Mm. But there is, it's, <laughs> he's not going to suddenly throw open the borders. I think actually we might see something very similar, but just a more kind of boring technocratic approach of the Yvette Cooper strand rather than the sort of banging the table Suella Braverman style. But this is, I don't think we're suddenly going to get a very liberal approach to immigration. No. I'll, answer, I'll answer your question. I think that Farage is right now much more of a thorn in the side of the Conservative Party's senior uh, figures. I avoid the term leadership because currently we don't really have one. Mm. But, um, you know, Labour's just got elected with a hell of a mandate and a hell of a majority. Farage, as far as they're concerned, will be noises off. And in fact, the more he kind of sounds off and makes life harder for the Tory party, the happier they'll be. It's clearly, in my view, much more of a challenge for Tories who lost dozens and dozens of seats by the margin of the reform vote uh, to think about what Farage is saying. Do you try and cosy up? Do you try and alienate? We just look at France as an example, first round, second round. Is treating the right as something you want to mm. get on side with or alienate the right thing to do from the centre? It's going to be extremely difficult for the Conservative Party's leadership. Right now, I would say that Farage is net positive for Starmer. Do you? Uh, do, and net negative but even though, I mean, as you say, even though he's only got five MPs, he has such a high media profile. Yeah, but he's boot anything... and fairly, fairly and squarely at the Tory party. You know, the Labour Party in the end will always be, you know, the opposition for Farage, the enemy is the Tory party, which he's trying to kill off. But Keir Starmer does know the Labour Party are well aware of the impact that reform made in this election, <laughs> and they will know that two out of three voters did not vote for the Labour Party, and they are going to have to somehow appease that contingent of people who are waiting for action on immigration? Well, the Labour Party is, is making a point of not going anywhere near the discussion about their actual popular vote. Mm. <clears throat> and the fact that, you know, it was comparable to the post Iraq Blair, you know, uh, a vote share, it wasn't. Obviously, they won a stunning parliamentary majority, but in terms of actual votes in the ballot box, it wasn't nearly as successful as I think they hoped or, or they imagined. And that means that they... Well, I don't think they care very much. They're not going there. And so... Why should Farage, they? They just well, want yeah, to... But Farage... Election. Farage poses the kind of populist um, threat. He, Whatever you think about reform, they have captured that kind of desire for change among people, actually yeah. from a lot of left and right, young and old. That's mm. the interesting thing True. about the way that vote played out. And so if they don't... Keir Starmer's an arch technocrat. He's just never going to be interested in winning the average every woman and every man's vote in that kind of a way that I think actually reform and Farage are going some way towards. Mm. So it's kind of like... it's. I think I agree with Alex. He's, it's not really... He doesn't mm. care. It's mm. not really a thing for him. It's not really a threat. So you'd be saying at home, we're talking about housing before, of course, a lot of you drawing attention to the fact, Matt says, the biggest need for housing is coming from immigration. And we can already see that the Labour bill at best will do nothing uh, to resolve that. Jason says, we don't want more houses. It's ridiculous. Our villages are being destroyed. Cut migrants. We won't need all these houses. The NHS is broken. How will they cope? It is a joke. And Sue says, my worry is the mass building of new New houses is going to be done poorly. So many new houses are now of poor quality and they all look like Legoland with a lack of imagination about design.